talk about securing Nigeria's future, the fierce urgency of now. That was the, that's the umbrella theme of the 2021 NESG Summit, which speaks directly to the current state of Nigeria's economy, the falling Naira, the increasing uh, insecurity, joblessness, poverty, uh, and general mystery of the populace. Dr. Franklin Ugu is attending the Economic Summit in Abuja, and he joins us now from Abuja's uh, studios there. Uh, Dr. Ugu is the Director of Sustainability at the Lagos Business School. Thank you, uh, uh, Prof, uh, Professor Ugu, for uh, making it tonight uh, on the show. Thank you very much, Boston, for having me. Yes, the, the anchor of the NESG summit uh, is on the urgency of now. And one thing I noticed in, in, in the hall, uh, we quit a bit of that earlier, was that the theme of the summit was translated in three Nigerian major languages uh, at the back there in Yoruba, Alsa, and Igbo. And that's quite very interesting for me. Uh, over the years, having seen that English was most of the spoken uh, language there, maybe this time we'll start bringing Wazobia uh, to beer so that everybody understands the urgency of the time. Uh, tell me about this. Uh, of course, you know, just by the term, in terms of securing our future, the first urgency of now, in the sense that everybody understands that Nigeria is in challenging times. Whether you talk about inequality, insecurity, unemployment, poverty, and different challenges. So, of course, that means that our future is not secured. So, and that's why it is very urgent that we look into this, some of these issues and examine and come out with a better plan, a be better policies in terms of what we can do to secure our future, given the precarious situation that we are as a country. Well, uh, t tell me about the dialogue so far today, the first of the two-day summit. Part of what you heard uh, revolves around the country's debt, revenue, GDP to ratio, ratio uh, 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 servicing our debt and all of that. Oh, it's a two-day summit where we're going to have over 25 sessions looking at different issues uh, about Nigeria. Today we had... Um, um, about three plenary sessions. One was looking at key priorities that we're going to use to secure our future. The second one looked at uh, public sector reforms. And the last one we just finished uh, looked at the issues of security. And uh, of course, it, it's been a robust discussion. It's been very interesting. So the last session we had, we had, um, so let me even start first that we had a keynote address by the former prime minister of Ethiopia, who really gave a very, very interesting speech and clearly encouraged Nigeria to see how they can be more focused in terms of delivering the dividends of democracy, given the situation we have. And he, he made a very interesting uh, statement. He says that if, if Nigeria is secured, it means that Africa is secured. Because, of course, you know, out of every five Africans, one is a Nigerian. So, and of course, also is the biggest economy in Africa. It means that uh, the other African nations are actually looking up to Nigeria to say, how do we secure this country, secure our future, secure the youth, secure the lives and property of this country to move forward? Uh, what is the private sector view of things around the key focus of the summit? You are from the private sector. Uh, they, uh, the private sector is um, they're, they're embracing the summit very well. Of course, NESG is more or less a, a private sector driven, trying to engage the federal government to see how we can promote more public private sector dialogue and participation so that we can achieve sustainable and inclusive growth in Nigeria. So the private sector, of course, were represented. We had CEOs from different companies, different sectors. And in terms of the participation today, it's also been very, very good. As I said, we started with a keynote address by the Prime Minister. That was followed by key priorities that we are supposed to look into. And one of the key priorities properly identified was the area of agriculture. In terms of how can we use it to really achieve a better outcome in terms of creating jobs, in terms of reducing unemployment, in terms of reducing poverty, and in terms of raising revenue. And the Prime Minister of Ethiopia clearly explained what they did in Ethiopia in different, the way they've reformed different sectors to achieve that. And that took us to the next uh, primary session, which was on reforming the public sector, where we had interesting conversations like Joe, uh, Dr. Joe Abba, 
clearly telling Nigerians some of the efforts being made to reform the public sector and the challenges that we are having. And he clearly also said that Nigeria will, public sector will be reformed properly to really serve the public when the politicians agreed for it to be reformed. And also in the initial primary session, Didi Unelli made a very passionate appeal to say some of the things that we are supposed to do in terms, for example, looking at agriculture, not just agriculture, but looking at it as a, as a, from a food crisis perspective. That will really help everybody to get on board. And the last one also in, in terms of issue of security. So the private sector is more or less willing, capable, and asking the public sector in terms of how do we use monetary policy, fiscal policies, to create the enabling environment that will enable the private sector to thrive. Okay, so... And interesting also, the governor of... Please, please go ahead. And also, interestingly also, the governor of uh, KB State uh, uh, clearly said that uh, we need over $1 trillion uh, investment in Nigeria. We have the capacity to, to absorb it. So he is asking also that the federal government should lead the, 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 the exchange and the engagement with the international community to mobilize both uh, external and local finance to yeah. see how we can use them to really so the, invest you, in different you, you parts the of private sector, Professor Ngo, you in, folks in the private sector understood the urgency of the times we live in. Uh, did you get the sense that the, uh, the, the public sector understands the same urgency of the time we live in? Are you on the same page as it were? Did you, say, did you sense um, that? It, it's clear that it, it, no, it's clear that the private sector understands and feels the urgency of now more than the public sector. But also, I will also say that from what we heard today, right from the vice president, uh, Minister of State for Finance, uh, Finance Claire Mahabwa, Minister of Finance, uh, um, Zainab Ahmed, that is clear that the awareness, the, um, the understanding of the first, first urgency of now is increasing from the public sector. And it means that if this tempo is sustained, it means that a better outcome can be achieved. But of course, give, if, you, if you are comparing between the public sector and the private sector, it's clear that the private sector understands it better because they did directly with the economy, with the people, they are, on the, they are on the ground to understand the issues that we are having. So the question then is, they're asking the public sector to help them to create the right environment to enable Nigerians to really thrive, given the um, uh, Im impressive uh, outcomes that we are, we are having from uh, different parts of Nigeria in terms of firms that are actually really doing well even at the global stage. Uh, what outcomes are you expecting from this uh, summit, the ESG Summit for 2021, what would it mean as the way forward for the domestic economy? Well, what it will mean, this is the 27th NESG Summit. So it means that given the, 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 the title, which is uh, securing our future, the first urgency of now, that at the end of this two-day summit, we will uh, prepare the report uh, the, and clear, uh, send it to the federal government to the state government, and we hope that with this report, in addition to other reports being, that have been prepared and submitted, that the federal government and the state government, even the local government, can understand the first urgency of now and quickly double the efforts to address some of these challenges that we're having, given, knowing fully well that if we don't do it, uh, our future is very, very bleak. So we believe that the federal, as I said before, they are, they are starting to, uh, there, there is an increasing acceptance and understanding that things that Nigeria is in challenging times and there is need for us to do better. So if this tempo is sustained, with the willingness and capability of the private sector, we believe that a better Nigeria can be achieved uh, going forward. Um, but what is more important before, let me, uh, let me just say something before I stop. But what is more important as emphasized is the political will on the part of the government to really do what they're supposed to do in terms of the key reforms and keep are supposed to use to move the country forward. Uh, on a final note, here we are today with the central bank unveiling a new uh, partnership window for the private sector scale, the policy on production and productivity, which is a 100 for 100 uh, PPP initiative. Do you think this is another window being opened? Uh, I think that looking at it just uh, from the way it was uh, 
stated today by the governor of CBN, I think is a positive development. But the question is, how sustainable will it be? It is a good development. But of course, another thing is, uh, you do 100. 100 is good, but 100 is, uh, is very, very small, uh, given the, what we are looking at. Another issue is if you give them finance. Finance is just one of the major problems that they're having. The other problem that they're having. So if you give them money, what happens with regards to this issue of seaports in terms of some of them that want to export, or some of them that want to import raw materials? Will they use the money to now settle the challenges that they have in the seaport? So what I'm trying to say is that while it is very a, a laudable uh, uh, policy from the central bank, there are also other issues that need to be looked into to really support the private sector. And also, this will go through the financial sector, the banks. So the question then that people will be asking is, the CBN is trying, it's, they are trying in different areas, but more or less, would this not crowd out the, the banks in terms of their intermission role in terms of supporting the, 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 the private sector? So it's good, but it has to be properly looked into to make sure that it's sustainable and is effective. Uh, we thank you for your time on the show tonight, Professor uh, Franklin Ugu, Director of Sustainability Center at the Lagos Business School. We wish you all, all of you the best at the NESG Summit 2021. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Mm -hmm.